Uh, good morning, my dear kids. In the chapter Ray Optics, we are going to discuss the uh, numericals on the uh, lens part B. That one part A is what previous class we have discussed. So now part B, we are going to discuss. This one. So by this time, you might have seen uh, we have to be very good in the ray diagram. First, read the question, uh, get the optical instruments properly, the lens, mirror, slab, prism, what all the uh, devices are there, put them in order according to the question. Then where the object is there, is it a real or virtual object, then draw the ray diagram, uh, then with the help of ray diagram, then you take help of the, the equations, like what are the equations, what we have, the magnification, the length equation, mirrors formula, so these are some small uh, things what already you know though they have to be applied here so it's all about like you have to put effort how i can solve lacks of problem but you don't solve problem rank will not come i think uh, let me make things clear i don't want to do any uh, magic here i'm not a magic teacher very practical teacher i will solve problem i'm just going to boost your confidence so the, the way I solve problem, learn the method, and you start working problem. Because you have to become engineer, future, you have to do the job. I will not do the job. You must have a thinking brain. So what is your primary motto is to develop the thinking brain. So all these numerical analysis will help you to have a thinking brain. Okay, fine. So I have brought some around the more than 10 numericals. Uh, we will explore all them through the ray diagrams and everything. So let me start the class. <clears throat> a point object to O is placed. A point object O is placed at a distance X from converging lens so that final image is formed at on, on, on object O itself. Find the value of X. So we have here converging lens with a concave mirror. This is the object here. The final image should be there only. What should be the method like uh, we have mirror? So we have he is asking us to <coughs> get this particular thing. No. Okay. I'll I'll start with the ray diagram. A ray after passing through the, if object is at 2f, where the image will be? Image will be at 2f only. If object is at 2f, the image will be at 2f. And, and if a ray passes through a center of curvature, it, it will retrace path. Problem is over. Object is kept at distance, so the image should be. This should be two f. Let me use some other color. Two f one. Two f one. So the image will be formed here. <coughs> If this will become center of curvature, center of curvature, because what is the focal length of this? 10 centimeters, so radius of curvature will be 20 centimeters. And, and this 10 centimeter converging lens, 2f will be 20 centimeters. So what do we expect now? For R2, I'll write it. If image I1 is formed at the center of curvature, then the Image I2 will be formed there only. Then if, if object is at I2, then image, final image will be here. So therefore, what should be the value of X? 2F1. Only magnitude we are calculating. Okay, this should be your answer. Uh, 
I am testing the ray diagram to better take your posture. How do you make guess such thing? How do you make guess of such things here? So what I do is like an object is kept here. So the final image, uh, if object is at 2f in front of lens, the image will be at 2f. And if this becomes center of curvature, the image I2 will be formed here only. And I2 is at 2f, the final image I3 will be 2f. So it has to retrace path, the ray. We take the next one. A thin biconvex lens of refractive windows 3 by 2 is placed on a horizontal plane mirror as shown with a plane mirror. The space between the lens and the mirror is filled with a liquid of refractive index 4 by 3. It is found that when a point object is placed 15 cm above the lens on the film axis, the object coincides with its own image. On repeating with another liquid, the object and the image again coincide at a distance 25 cm from the lens. Calculate the refractive index of the another liquid which is there. You can solve by several methods this one. You can solve by several methods. So let me uh, begin with this. I have a mirror. This is a mirror. Then we have a lens. This is silhouette. Then, then in between, okay, there's a lens. This is our lens. Now the gap between the lens and the plane mirror is filled with a liquid. I'll choose, this is the liquid. So this will behave like a plano convex lens. The liquid blue color on what you see will behave like a plano convex lens. Now we have kept an object so that the image will be formed there. refractive index of this be mu1, mu2, that of the liquid be mu3. Radius of this curvature, let it be r, we don't know. Equiconvex, biconvex is telling. And, and this medium is there, no? We have this one. Uh, you, you can do one thing. This whole setup you should replace with a concave mirror. <coughs> and if this, if it is at a yeah, this distance is how much? 15 cm. Then this whole setup will behave like a converging mirror such that where the object and image should be at same point, so when it's possible, it's center of curvature. So what should be the uh, equivalent converging mirror? That should be equal to, the radius of curvature should be 15 centimeter. Then, so we don't know radii, and we know <coughs> mu1, mu2, mu3. With that, we'll calculate the arc. That is the one approach. Straight away, you can go for refraction at spherical surface form. Because uh, what should happen to the ray after refraction? The rays after refraction from the this lens and the liquid should be incident normally on this. I think this ray diagram is something very important. We'll undergo
after refraction should be like this. That means ah, this diagram is very important. You can see clearly refraction, no refraction will occur. After refraction here, it should be inserted normally so that it will reach its path. It will be incident normally on the mirror, it will reach its path. So, first refraction at surface A, then at B will apply it. At A, uh, this will be the refracted ray is in medium of refractance mu to nu. So, this will be mu to pi dash minus mu 1 everything I, I'll choose p center because it's thin lens p o equal to mu 2 minus mu 1 by plus r p 1 will be minus 15 I'll substitute all this and later on. Okay, then again at B refraction. Now whether reflected in, in the liquid mu3 and and it should be infinite, you know, because after refraction should will become parallel. The final image will be at infinity. The minus mu2 pi dash equal to mu3 minus mu2 by r. Adding up these two, minus mu1 po equal to mu2 minus mu1 by r. r. Adding 1 and 2, equation 1, this is 2. Adding 1 and 2. Adding 1 and 2, so this will be u1 po mu2 minus mu1 or po, this will be mu1 is 1 minus 15. Refract when it's uh, mu2, how much? 1.5. So mu2, 1.51. The value of r, with, uh, this r should be positive. This mu3 is how much? 4 by 3. Minus 1.5. But minus r. Solving this, we will get expression for r. Now, why, why negative sign? The radius of curvature, this is minus r. For here only, I will write it as minus po plus r. I think this would be a better idea. Solving this, we will get expression for <coughs> R. Uh, I need the value of R. Okay. 
टेन सेंटीमीटर Again, again, we'll we'll change this same diagram. Another liquid is brought here. On repeating with another liquid, the object and image again coincide at a distance 25 centimeter from the lens. The same situation. It will be 25 centimeter. Second situation. This will be 25. The liquid here will be some other liquid will be. I'm changing color. Earlier it was blue, no? Now it will be green color. We have to calculate the refractive index of this liquid. Mu four. I'll write it here. Mu one as usual. This will be mu one. This will be twenty five. So again, again at a. I'll write it here. Mu four. So this is at a. Then again, mu two. P I double dash some some image here. Actually, it should be same. So let me write P I dash only. Mu one minus mu dash. Some other position. It should not be same thing. No? Dash equal to mu two minus mu one plus one. Then at B. Mu four by infinity minus mu two minus one. Three and four. Uh, the four become minus mu one. Minus P O dash We know all values, so we have to calculate mu four. Let me do the calculation part. Now mu one is one, P O dash is minus twenty four, mu two one point five minus one plus ten mu four. We don't know. Uh, mu two one point five. This is mu two. One point six will come. What is other approach? Uh, I said some. We have other approach also. This everything you should replace with a. This everything you should replace with a. The other approach I'll show you. I'll, I'll bring to the next page. What is other approach? See, nothing wrong. You should analyze. You should analyze the different methods. It's not that you should think in this way only. What is other approach? If this is the lens, so you can. What you can do is like, you can replace this everything by is. Such that it should be at the center of curvature of it, so that object and image will be there only. 
then then use formula silver lens formula take help of this silver lens then find out the equivalent focal length first you calculate focal length of this and this so 1 by f2 1 by f3 will be equal to 1 by fn focal length of mirror is infinity then 1 by f should be equal to 1 by fn minus 2 by f this is what data focal length of this should be equal to 15 by 2 if object it has center of curvature image will be at center of curvature only so now you know f you know fm will be infinity then you know what is f2 what is f2 1 by f2 is equal to mu2 1.5 minus 1 1 by r minus 1 by r. Okay, that, that F2 will come here. We know F. F2 will come. And what is F3? F3 we have here. 1 by F2 is equal to mu3. Uh, mu refractive index is 1 point theta. Mu3 is 4 by 3 solely. They know concave it is. Fine. So you know F3. You know F. Then substitute here using this formula. You will get R. Then again proceed in the similar way. Okay, fine. This will be lengthier. What method I earlier shown that will be much easier. This will be lengthier one. Or you can use this method also this is the equivalent concave mirror I am telling this one length is such a topic where you have to work out many numericals huh? no uh, a diverging lens of focal length f1 20 cm is separated by 5 cm from a converging mirror focal length f2 10 cm. Where should an object be placed so that a real image is formed at object itself? Here only the real image should be there. How do we manage this? Again, again, see there are two ways are there you can work out or, or <coughs> take help of ray diagram. The final image should be there at the object itself. See, when you have plane mirror, the ray should be incident normally. When you have a curved mirror, the image, the object for this should be at center of curvature. I think there's a trick better understand. If you have a plane mirror and image should be formed at the object itself, then the ray should be incident normally on a plane mirror. If you have a, some curved mirror, then the image, the object for that curved mirror should be at center of curvature so that the rays can, the rays can retrace path here. Now we know for uh, like a concave lens, it will form a virtual object no? I will take a diagram. Ray is incident.
after refraction the ray will diverge I think I'll show refraction with respect to this vertical line. It'll be easy for me. Now, if the image is for, now after refraction. It should be the center of for the ray has to retrace a path. There's another thing. I will, I will. This is the thing. Image I1 is formed. Such that if this I1 becomes center of curvature. Center of curvature of what? Center of curvature of this, this particular concave concave mirror. Then the rays will retrace, it will retrace path. Then finally, the final image will be from the end. So final image will be so sir we are we are not understanding anything. This is what I think uh, you can put here. This is the center of curvature. Center of curvature. If a ray is incident at center of curvature, it will retrace path mode. First there's a ray, incident ray will undergo refraction as the diverging lens will get diverged here. Then image will be formed at I2. If this becomes center of curvature, after reflection, it will retrace path. Then, then, then again, it will undergo refraction. The ray will meet here. Hope, oh, are you getting me? Now, what is the question asked? We have to calculate this x. Now, what should be P2, C2? Should be two times of focal length. P2, C2 should be. Twenty centimeter we know it. Then we know this is five. So what can be this distance? This is R. R and write it A. We know A plus five should be equal to P two C two or P one P one C two. I'll write in the form of symbol P2 plus P1 plus P1 C2 should be equal to P2 C2. P2 plus P1 is 5. This is A. This is 20. So A should be equal to 15 centimeters. So now we know that this image I1 distance. We know focal length. We'll apply length equation 1 by P1 I1. P1 equal to 1 by F1. P1 I1, we know this. This is equal to minus 50. We don't know this. Focal length of this is minus 20. So you should keep the object at a distance of 60 centimeters from the concave lens so that the final image will be formed by the object itself. Ray diagram, I am really 
taking help of ray diagram without ray diagram also you can solve that will be more lengthy very complicated more possibility of going wrong with science everything so i am taking my experience so i i suggest you that have a ray diagram background it will be very easy for you to analyze things with the question okay now we have the next question find the position of final image found the gap shown in figure is of negligible width almost they are in contact we have here a lens okay straight away i think no 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 ray diagram is needed since you know all the values here so let's apply the equations here so let me have a diagram or or okay this one one by towards right is positive so one by pi1 po equal to focal length So pi one two hundred by thirty twenty by three centimeter. Where do it will be? The rays after refraction. After this, I should be dotted you now because the mirror will not permit. Okay, I'll give you one second. So the rays wants to converge at this particular point due to refraction. So this is I one. Twenty by three centimeter. Now there is a refraction at lens. This is what happens. So the ray, the incident ray, after refraction, they wants to converge at I. I one, sorry. No, no, it will undergo reflection in the mirror. So now at at mirror. It mirror. So what should be formula? P I two. Mm -hmm. Okay, some 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 small correction here. It should do. Lens equation of minus one by V minus one by U equal to one by F. Uh, this will be twenty minus ten. Will be twenty. Plus twenty minus ten by ten two hundred two hundred by ten twenty. Okay, now P I two plus P I one equal to focal length of the mirror. This is F one. This is F one. So substituting the P I one will be plus twenty because towards right is positive convention. Because the rays are incident and towards right is positive, so this will be convex mirror. Focal length will be plus ten. Why, why this is positive? Because you are going to measure P I one in the direction of this incident ray, and and the focal length F two will be somewhere here. 
and how you measure in the direction of infinite rate. So therefore, they should be positive. So this will become 1 by pi to equal to 1 by 10 minus 20. will be what does it mean the image will be formed there only because this is the center of curvature no? this will become center of curvature so what happened to this rays will retrace funds So it will retrace path. The final image will be here only. I1, I2, with I2. Because uh, again, again the retrace path. So final image will be formed at final image. The values of D1, D2 for final days to be parallel to the principal axis. Just we have to keep on guess here, nothing is there. So this is 10 centimeter. Focal length of this is 10 centimeter. This is also 10 centimeters. So first one by one, we'll check option A. Okay, this is the focal length F1. F3, 5 centimeter. I have kept an object. Now, if this is 10 centimeter, I, 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 I'm checking myself huh, whether I'm light or not. I'm checking myself. We know uh, the rays uh, object is at 10 centimeter. So after refraction, after refraction, what happens? The rays will become parallel no? because if object is at second principal focus. If real object at the second principal focus of the convex lens, after refraction, the rays will become parallel. Now, if the rays are incident parallelly on this, so they should converge where? They should converge at. And show different colors, they'll become parallel. Now, after that, they should get focused at 10 centimeters. First, the ray incident ray, refractive ray, again it got refracted. Hmm. Then, 10 centimeter is this distance. Huh? The remaining how much will be 5 centimeters. Let me adjust this. Mm -hmm. 
now you see this one or the ray no no, no they'll not stop here only no they'll further proceed they further proceed now this will become like a virtual this will be object so after refraction This is ten centimeters. Rays will become parallel. This is ten centimeter, no? Uh, will be at focus level. If object is at, let's say. option B is not possible option B will try it option B is not possible uh, this is not possible we have seen that okay let's, let's do one thing now if D2 is equal to D1 equal to 20 centimeter. This is 20 centimeters. I think 10 or 20. If this is 10 centimeter. Even this 20 centimeter, the rays will be parallel. There won't be any problem. Uh, after refraction, it will be at 10. It doesn't matter. So D2 15. If you take it, okay, some some correction. The rays after this, they should come here. Actually, this is a condition. You can form the, I will show you. When they will become Okay, fine. So the rays here after refraction here, if they come and meet at this particular point, then this will be 5 centimeter. This will be 10 only. Then after refraction, <coughs> here the rays will become parallel. I think some, some correction is there in the question. You can see now so this is the so what is d1 this is the d1 this is the d2 
yeah, 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 there's a problem with this one. Okay, fine. No, no, okay. When when d1 either 10 centimeters, d1 10 centimeters, d2 will be 15. Uh, there's a correction in there. This should be 20 centimeters. No, okay, everything is fine here. So first, let me start here. So object is at a focal length. Real object kept at the focal length of the convex lens. After refraction, the rays will become parallel. Then if the rays are incident parallel on convex lens. They'll converge at the focal length. Why the focal length of this 20 centimeters? So this distance is how much? It's 15 centimeters. So at 5 centimeters, they'll converge. This will become like a virtual object. If virtual object at the focal length of diverging lens, after refraction, the rays will become parallel. You can see this one now. So therefore, D2 should be 15 centimeters. D2 should be 15 centimeters. D1, 10. Now you make it D1, 10, 20, 30, it doesn't matter. You vary this distance, it doesn't matter. See. I'll, I'll give a rough diagram. The distance now, even whether you make this 10 or 20, the answer will be the same. Even you make it this 30, it doesn't matter see, as long as D2 is seen. Therefore. So, therefore, we'll pick up option A, B, C. But this is a correction, this has to be 20. Okay, fine. Well, I'll just highlight it. Okay, we'll take the next one. Our correct options will be key will be A, B, C. What, what all possible? Key will be A, B, and C. Convex lens, uh, he has not given diagram. We are supposed to assume the diagram also. A convex lens. This is a convex lens. It's placed in front of another convex lens. Of same focal length. Focal length will be same. And and a plane mirror will come. Where should a point be placed into a first lens so that <coughs> it images on itself? It, it images on itself. centimeter focal length of this 10 centimeters 10 centimeters all together the ray should be incident parallelly on the plane mirror the, when a plane mirror comes the ray should be incident parallelly so the rays after refraction from the second lens should become parallel this is the one requirement then they'll retrace path here OK, 
okay now now uh, let, let's keep an object here it is this distance we know 30 cm so that the images on itself now for this to become parallel so i think uh, let, let me take up of the ray diagram and start from here this is ray diagram for this to happen the rays after refraction should be like this then then these rays okay can diagram something okay some some rough diagram just make a make adjustment again i can't change everything it should be like this now this should be the object i1 again i2 I3, this I4. So we know this should be the 10 centimeter. No, no, sorry. This should be the 10 centimeter. The ray. Then five hours. No. Okay, there's a condition. So this should be the focal length of the film. 10 centimeter if this is 10 centimeter this distance should be 20 centimeter now we'll go for it one by let me call this is p p1 p2 so one by p1 i1 minus P one O equal to one by F one. P one I one. P one O this is unknown P. Focal length will be plus ten. So P one I one is how much? P one I one is plus twenty. Twenty centimeter. You can could have done the a diagram. Just I wanted to show by some form, form laws. Plane mirror, the ray should be incident normally to retrace. If a curved mirror, then the ray should pass through the center of curvature. I think this is an overall background. I think you know this much more than enough. No need to do so many problems.
two identical convex lenses L1, L2 are placed. Given diagram it has supposed to draw. Identical, they have. Then we have a mirror. No, from, from reading question after reading question, I'm able to. Yeah, fine. So there's a lens L1, L2. This is a mirror M. The focal length of each lens. I'll write it. 15 centimeters. Twenty centimeter is this distance. Point object is kept here. Find where a convex mirror of radius of curvature five centimeter. Radius of curvature five centimeter means minus five by two centimeter. F three. should be placed so that final image coincides with the object. Oh, again, <laughs> but the basic idea is, is testing, really testing us here now. Two lenses are there, the final image now. This one. Good practice, you have mirrors, lenses, or lens equation, mirrors formula, all things will be happening. He's asking you to calculate this distance. Then again, the, for curved mirror comes, what should be the condition? The ray should pass through the center of curvature. The incident rays on the mirror should be on the center of curvature. We know focal length is F2 here. If the center of curvature will be here. So the rays after refraction from this lens should be incident, should, should fall normally here. Okay, I think first we'll, we'll start from here, where the image will be I1, applying the P1, this is P2, P3, 1 by P1 I1, P1 equal to 1 by 2, minus 20 equal to plus 15. P1 I1 equal to 20 into 15 by 35. 20 into 3 by 7. 60 by 7 centimeter. 60 by 7, 7, 9. Okay, somewhere here. This is I1. The image form, okay, now. P2 I2 plus P2 I1 equal to 1 by F2. Towards right is positive. 2. Uh, you may not understand. Once I draw ray diagram, it will become very clear. What is the condition? The rays after refraction from this lens should fall normally. Should fall normally here. Yeah. Then only the rate is part here. So therefore, what should be the P2 <coughs> I3? P2 I3, P2 I2. I2 should be here. So P2 I2, so this should be the distance x and we know this distance is how much? Radius of curvature is 5 centimeter. Okay, this is 5 centimeter. So P2 I2 will be x plus 5. P2 I1. Uh, I think I, even my calculation is correct. 1 by 20. P1 is 
this will become 1 by 20 plus 1 by 50, 15 plus 20, 35, 35. If 20 into 15 by 8, 20 into 35. We enjoy 7, 60 by 7. Okay, now, now P to I1. P to I1, what we can write it as? Minus of? Incoming call from Rita Bangor. Okay, now, now uh, 60, this will be 20 minus 60 by 7 equal to F2 will be plus 50. Now why you are doing so the image formed by this length should be at the location of C2. So we are not understanding. Yes, I will help you through the ray diagram after this action. Now this ray. So, will it retrace path? It's one arrow, two arrows, two arrows, three arrows. I can't draw so many arrows. I'll, I'll just show it here. It will retrace path here. It's possible, no? We have to just count the, the value of x is here. Huh? Uh, it should be positive, huh? because the direction of incident is positive. So 1 by x plus 5, this will be 1 by 15, plus this will be 140 minus 16 by 7. This, this negative sign, if I send on the side, will be positive. So this will be 1 by x plus 5 equal to uh, this will be 80. Eighty plus 15 into 7. 105 by 15 into 80. Now, huge calculations are there. Somebody should help me. <laughs> it is 77. <laughs> so, this will become 185. 15 into 8, 120, so 1200. So x plus 5 will be 1200 by 185. Or x is equal to, I don't have other choice, I have to do the calculation. Okay, this next part will be 200 minus 185 into 5. 185 into 5. Nine twenty five. So 200 minus 925, 275.
divided by 1 meter per second. 1.486. Hope all my calculations are correct. This correct. Huh? Mm -hmm. okay, I think I'll, I'll check my calculation from where I am missing it. So P1 I1 should be equal to 20 into 15 by 35. Seven sixty by seven. Object is at minus twenty. No? Focal length of this is fifteen. So image will be sixty by seven. Should be. If this is wrong, then everything will. So let me. I think I'm. I'm right. I'm right. Oh, oh, oh. Minus one by twenty will become plus 1 by 20. So P1 I will equal 20 into 15 by 20 plus 15 35. Okay, fine. Ah, this will be our answer. Huh? This is our answer. Hmm? Okay, some uh, simple lens equation ray diagram if you draw it more a little bit easier huh? okay, well, this, uh, let, let's see. within convex lens having focal length 20 centers cut in two parts 10 millimeter above the principal axis and they are kept somewhere so i think the basic diagram I, I to draw the diagram above the principal axis the lens is split ten millimeter above I'll call A this is this part is above with optical center at the origin and upper portion at 90 degrees. Oh, the part minus 30 <coughs> point object is here. Okay, fine. Find the find the coordinates of final assuming paraxial rays of proportion to remain valid. Ah, okay, this is the y-axis. This is 90 centimeter. This is 30 centimeter. Focal length. If you cut it, focal length will remain same. What is the focal length of this? It will have same focal length. Focal length of lens will not change. Already I discussed in previous class, if you cut the lens parallel to optic axis, the focal length of the lens will not change. Now first the rays will undergo refraction, then will undergo refraction. Okay, the, due to this we can calculate the image here. What about this?
how to work out this one. So it is not on principal axis. So if you go for the complete lens, if there were a complete lens were there, Its principal axis would have been somewhere here. Ah, this is the the key <coughs> thinking of the problem. The optic center, what we call C, it would have been here. This is the optic axis for this piece of the lens. This is the optic axis for this one. Two lens are there, lens one, lens two. The optic axis for lens two is this one. So what we'll write here, optic axis of lens two. What is this one? Optic axis of lens. See, what, what is this? The, the lens would have been here, no? This cut and, and it is moved here. So definitely its optic axis will shift. How much? By A. This is a trick of the problem. Nothing is there. What is A? A is what? 10 millimeter. Be P1, I'll write it. P2. The focal length will remain same, F only. This is a length one. Okay, let's write the equations. I will draw the ray diagram in the end, if possible. Yeah? So the equations will be 1 by P1, I1. This 1 by P1 equal to 1 by F, F1 or F that one. So 1 by P1 I1, this will be minus 30, towards right will be positive, because the incident rays are, are, are striking the lens, so the incident rays are moving towards right, so the P1 O will measure opposite incident ray, so therefore it should be negative. Focal length will be plus 20. So 1 by P1 I1 equal to 1 by 20 minus 1 by 30 uh, will be 60. 30 minus 20 by 600. So P1 I1 equal to 60 centimeter. 60 centimeter means the image has to be somewhere here. This will become now object for this lens. 30 centimeter but at a height here. So we'll we'll apply now P2 I2. So I2 equal to for part of the lens. For smaller lens, this is so this will be P2 I2, P2 I1 will be minus 30, focal length plus 20. Why minus 30? This distance should be equal to. So this will be 
into I two equal to one by N T. Again will be plus sixty. Then magnification M two is equal to P two I two by P two I P two I two will be sixty. This will be minus thirty. Minus two. Then we'll calculate the height of the object. M two into what is the height of the object? This is the <coughs> height of the object. Ten millimeter will be minus. 20 millimeter. Where the 20 millimeter will be below this one, and where it is 60 centimeter. From here, 60 centimeters. And below this, this will be the position of height. What is this? This will be 60 centimeter. So, what should be the coordinates of I2? Coordinates of I2 should be 90, 150 centimeter plus A is how much? 10 millimeter. Ninety plus sixty, one fifty centimeter. This is the origin, no? So this is this is ten millimeter, twenty millimeter. So the rays after refraction, uh, you try it. Uh, I don't have a place to draw the ray diagram. This is the position of your. So what is I two? Coordinates of final image. <coughs> a virtual object is kept at six centimeter from concave lens. I shall find the position of final image. Virtual object. So let this be the P. Let this be the M. Now from the lens equation, P I one minus P one O. Equal to one by four comma. Substituting all this, P I one. This will be plus six focal length minus ten. Yeah, here. Why plus six? Because the direction of incident ray is towards right is positive. The incident rays are are moving towards right. Okay, that one. So it will be like this. So uh, we will solve this one. One by twelve point five. Sixty by four will be. One point five. Sorry, fifteen, fifteen, fifteen. I got paused you. Fifteen centimeter, ah, fifteen centimeter means it will form somewhere here nearby it. I want that will become object for this. Okay. 
then where, where the mirror mirror will form the image at i2 so mi1 how much it should be equal to 1 cm then mi2 should also be 1 cm because this will become i1 it will form i2 now this i2 will become again object for this i think we'll we'll draw the ray diagram you get like that better picture the rays will be like this so after reflection this should diverge So now, now the rays will diverge from here. Now this I2 will become object for this. Okay, now again will be P I three minus P I two equal to focal length S one. Towards right will be positive. So P I three. So P I two. Sixteen. <coughs> this will be one centimeter. So this will be seventeen minus of this focal length minus two. Minus one by seventeen minus one by ten. So P I three equal to one seventy bar one seventy divided by twenty seven six point three P I three will be. So they'll diverge from 6.3 centimeter. The diagram will be very clumsy. This will be the thing. So this will be the final. Final image will be here. This will be final image. Will be virtual. I three will be virtual. At a distance of six point three centimeter from the optic center of the this one. So over the virtual object. the final image formed also final image is right so it will be virtual ah one more sum convex lens 
of focal length 20 cm and another plano convex lens of focal length 40 cm are placed coaxially. The plano convex lens is silvered on a plane surface. What will be the distance D? <coughs> so that the final image of object O is formed on O itself. Hmm. Another condition. So we have here a mirror. Huh? If the ray falls normally on plane mirror, okay, that one, or this everything, can you replace with a concave mirror? Either of the method. Plano convex lens of 40 centimeters. So we know this. So can we, but what we have is only focal lens are placed coaxially. The plano is silvered on plane surface. We don't have mu something. Or still, I think we can work out, no? This will be. So I'll, I'll prefer this some simple method. Oh, I should replace so they say this is a plano convex lens it is similar can I replace with this with a concave mirror yes I can replace with a concave mirror hope everyone is getting so I'll, I'll start the diagram I to draw the diagram no? I call it. so there's a plano there's a convex lens as it is This is a convex lens. This I will replace with a concave mirror. Object is here. 10 cm focal length F1, 20 cm. This will calculate. Now the silver lens, what you can, plano convex lens, silver it is. It is equal to plano convex lens plus plane mirror that should be equal to concave mirror so focal length of this is what we know f dash 40 centimeter given or fl i'll write it this is fl focal length of plane mirror is infinity so how do we calculate 1 by f2 equal to 1 by fn minus 2 by fl silver lens formula f2 it is infinity 2 by plus 40 so f2 is equal to minus 20 centimeter so i got this hmm. now the rays, so this is the P1, we take P2, let me apply the formula, 1 by P1 I1, P1 I1 equal to P1 O equal to 1 by F1, e using lens equation, the rays are moving towards right, this will be positive, here, 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 the ray, the ray will undergo refraction so p1 i1 p1 o I'll, I'll measure opposite incident ray no the, the incident is towards right so i'll measure distance like this so this will be focal length of this plus 20 10 minus 20 minus 20 centimeter. So the image will be where the image image will be here. Ah, now the the refracted rays. The refracted rays. So what happened? They'll, they'll converge. Yes, yes. Okay, they'll converge here. Now, 
how how they should fall <coughs> if they fall normally on concave mirror they'll retrace path no so we know this distance also 10 cm so therefore this has to be 20 cm if this becomes center of curvature for this the rays what happen will retrace path here I'll, i'll explain you through the ray diagram so the rays are incident now they will bend Reference line. With this footage, I'll show it. Is it okay? No. I think this is very fundamental. If you can understand this, this problem is over. The rays after refraction will form image I one. then what is this i1 will be center of curvature of this if object is at center of curvature image will be at center of curvature so the rays what happen will retrace path for this to happen so what is the condition now p2 so p2 c2 should be equal to 40 cm p2 p1 Plus P1 C2 equal to 40. So P2 P1 is what D no, and P1 C2 is how much? 20. Is it justified? The distance that should be 20 centimeters. Okay. You need lot of patience, sir. Uh, especially lens. No, you should uh, verify with the ray diagram, then write the equations. You know what is this? Refraction at lens. At lens, I'll write it. This is the equivalent where you are replacing plano convex by a concave mirror. Silver. Convex lens. This is a concave mirror. <coughs> Two converging lenses of focal length. Clearly visible. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, two converging lenses of same focal length f are separated by distance to f. The axis of second lens is inclined at an angle theta equal to 60 degrees. This, this is with respect to axis of first lens. A parallel paraxial beam of light is incident from left side of lens. Find the coordinates of the final image with respect to the origin of first lens. Other uh, lens is little bit inclined. Okay, now we will see this one. So, where the rays after refraction? Mm, I think I should draw the diagram. <coughs> no other way. Okay, let's try. 
the optics very difficult for especially for me uh, i to i to draw the ray diagram Draw the ray diagram. I have to draw the ray diagram. Ray diagram. One lens here. The other lens here. The principal axis of the other lens. 60 degree it is inclined. So the ray is incident. So this is P1. This angle is 60 degree. Focal length is f for both. And now where the rays, the, the rays will converge at f no? So this distance is f. This is f. Make sure to do. So this will be the I1. This is 60 degrees. So this I1 will become object for the second lens. So this is a lens 1. This is a lens 2. The rays incident normally on the first lens. So they will converge on the axis of this, this one. So what is the, this dotted one? This is the optic axis of lens 1. This is the optic axis of lens 2. Uh, is it is it this I1 on the axis, optic axis of this node? So what is the object distance? This will become object distance. Hmm. Able to get this and this is the focal length. So we will calculate the object distance now. So I'll, I'll write u2. So from the formula, 1 by v2, focal length, v2. Uh, this, this, how the rays? The rays are incident in this direction. So we have to calculate u2. How to calculate u2? So I will take help of the mathematics here. Cos 60 is equal to E2 E by E2 I1. One by two. P2 e A. P2 I1 is F. We should calculate P2 E you now. Okay, this will be f by 2. So this will be minus of f by 2 equal to the 7. 1 by v2 is equal to 1 by f minus 2 by f. equal to minus f. Minus f means <coughs> somewhere it, it has to be. This distance will be f by 2. 
y2 this distance will be then uh, we'll go for magnification m2 is equal to v2 by u2 v2 is what minus f minus f by equal to 2 magnification is 2 then the height h2 should be equal to m into h1 magnification is 2 h1 is i1 what is i1 mean find 60 is equal to i1 a by p2 i1 here 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 this, this triangle you have to look at this triangle hmm? so this will be root 3 by 2 uh, i1 a is what we need it p2 i1 is what f so i1 a is equal to root 3 f by 2 root 3 f and the coordinates sir huh? you're asking coordinates root 3 f i should measure in this direction i will draw one line this is what b so height of the image we know that is h2 so we'll calculate p1 b we'll see cross checking we don't know where the actually the image i2 sine 60 is equal to p1 b by p1 p2 so root 3 by 2 equal to p1 b by 2f so p1 b in fact root 3f and h2 also we got root here so final image will be there here 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 at this point so where the final image will form at the optic center of the first lens as h2 is equal to p1 b equal to root 3 f so therefore so therefore final image will be at final image i2 will be at optic center p1 of lens 1 ah, very good problem huh? you should be very good in <laughs> observation uh, we, we can write equation, you see that one. Making guess of things also is needed here. This is the location of final image. There are so many equations you wrote. Okay, this is from where? Triangles, sir. Several triangles, sir. Cos 60 is equal to uh, P2A by p1x so there's a triangle p2a i1 this is for triangle uh, p2b p1 This is for mm -hmm. 
two a i this is for triangle p2 b p1 I take the next one. Oh, okay, now. <coughs> Prism and lens, I have brought a problem. So first, I'll try to draw a rough diagram. I have a prism here. It's a thin prism. You can see the angle, five degrees. bring that this is a triangle uh, sorry the prism sorry <laughs> we have a prism and this is a lens Okay, there's a lens. Let me place it here. Ah, no, uh, what to do? Prism is there. I think whenever prism, okay, ray incident, okay, no, but we have point object nearby prism. How do we can calculate uh, all that? So it can recollect at the end of the prism, we have discussed some problem. Suppose say if there's a prism, it's a thin prism, this is the object is kept here. Let, let me re make you recollect, if a ray is incident, it will undergo deviation. Similarly, if a ray passes through this, it will undergo deviation. Now it will meet at a point called this is y, this is x. Then what is the deviation suffered by thin prism that should be equal to delta? This is what we take delta, no? Okay. So this will become delta then this is the prism so delta is equal to mu minus 1 into a this is the deviation produced by this prism then tan delta equal to y value. <coughs> so let me draw the ray diagram. The ray is passing through the prism. Another ray. You, you can pick up any ray that one. Okay. 
Okay, fine, done. So this is the deviation no? it has suffered. Okay. What is it? This is a deviation that I wanted to check this. So, of course, the refractive index of this is mu1, lower part is mu2. The deviation produced by upper and lower part will be slightly different here. Let it be different. So, this will be delta. So, this is delta, this will be delta. So this will be delta. Call this is y. This x. It is applicable even for the lower part also. Delta one, I'll write it. Y one. X will be same for both both the things. So with this help of this, we'll get the first the deviation. Deviation suffered by the rays above the optic axis is given by this one a1 so mu1 is how much uh, 3 by 2 angle of prism 5 degrees 2.5 degrees deviation suffered by the rays passing through lower part of the prism 4 by 3 minus 1 into 5 degrees 5 by 3 Okay, these are sorry. Uh, we have to convert into radian. No? Pi by 180 radians. Solving this, we will get the 0 0.044 radians. It's in degree, huh? I convert into radians. 5 by 180 and multiply it. Similarly, 5 by 3. Into 5 by 180 radians. So, this is a deviation suffered by this will become 0 0.03 radian. Now, we will calculate y1. What is a tan delta 1 equal to y1 by x. Uh, or it is a very small y1 by x. So y1 equal to x into delta 1. What is value of x? 45.5 this one into delta 1. Zero four four. Y one equal to approximately two centimeters. We we'll get it. That will be the image formed by the upper part of the prism. What is I one? I one is the image. By upper part of prism. O is object. Similarly, we will calculate the tan delta 2. Delta 2. Forty four forty five point five into uh, delta two will be zero point zero three. 
135, 45, 135, 135, 1.3 cm. So, image will be formed just below that one. Okay, they will become object for th this lens here. That I1 and I2 will become object here, I1, I1 dash. That corresponding images we have to find out. But they are not on optic axis. This is optic axis. I think initial part is what our mathematics are. First what we did is only the mathematical part. If I think I'll get some space to <coughs> yeah, everything is visible for you. Similarly, image will be, I2 will be formed here. Now we should, uh, what we should do? We should calculate, now we know I1. Sir, what about I2? I2 will be I'll show it here. I2 is there. Then this will be by 2. This will be. Delta 2, I'm unable to show it. The diagram will be very complicated. Now this will become I1, I2 will become object for the this diverging lens. Object distance is same. We'll calculate corresponding image distance. So we'll apply the lens equation. One by P O P I equal to one by M. What is our object distance? Total will be forty five point forty five point. Ninety centimeter. minus 90, focal length minus 30. PO equal to 19 to 30 by minus 60, 0, 3, 2, minus 45. This distance is so magnification of we define PO by PI sorry PI by PO PI is um, what I did symbol 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 or only symbol change I did. 1 by V minus 1 by U equal to 1 by F. Object is at a distance of 90 centimeter. Focal length is 30. As a diverging lens, minus 30. Solving this. Okay, okay, okay. Minus 90. 120. Zero zero three three four just ninety by four ninety divided by four twenty two point five so magnification minus twenty two point five by minus nine.
then we'll calculate the image height of the image height of the image will be h1 equal to magnification into y1 magnification into y1 is how much 2 cm So let, let me do calculation. So it will be 22.5 into 2 equal to 45. 45 by 90 will be 0 0.5. Okay, H2 equal to M into right magnification. into y2 will be 1.3 so this will be 0 0.325 centimeter <coughs> where they will be final images there will be here huh? at what distance pi will be 22.5 some somewhere here and they will be positive. They will be, they'll be here. So coordinates again you have to write down the coordinates. So coordinates of image will be I1 will be 67.5 centimeter, 0 0.5 centimeter. And I2 will be 0.325 centimeter. Coordinates and positions. The vote is asking. So can you show that in the diagram? So that will be here. I'll, I'll forty-four. This length was how much? Forty-four point five centimeter. This is the optic axis. Sir. The images will be somewhere here. Sixty-seven. This will be I one. This will be I2. Okay. Lot of strain. It's not that easy. We have to be very alert with all the conditions here. Huh? So just prism. So there are some types of problems. So we have plenty of numericals like this. Huh? It's not over. It's still, still. Well, I'll add to. Discuss plenty of numericals. Huh? Still, still very good numericals are there. Huh? Prism, uh, then we'll bring sphere and lens. Like combinations will not work now. You might have seen a plane mirror lens, curved mirror lens, prism lens. Next we'll bring some spherical object in the lens. So like this, the varieties of numericals we have to work out. Okay, kids, like a, we had the discussion about the numericals on the lens. I think I brought some different varieties of numericals. I just shown the method. So you also do practice plenty of numericals so that you'll get a good confidence. Once you have a better idea, you know, it'll be very easy for you. You see that after learning this today, 14 problems we have brought it here. 14 different types of problems. And all. So yesterday it was around 12. And earlier that one. So almost I think 30 problems till now I discussed. Another some 20 problems we'll discuss so that you'll get a still more a better picture. 
Hmm? Okay, work out more numericals, think on them. Hmm? These are better for you. Hmm? Uh, this lens is some sort of a topic where you can devise the total ray optics. That's why I'm just insisting. You can see that uh, spherical mirror, we have plane mirror, prisms. Hmm? Almost all the ideas of ray optics you can revise here. That's why I work out more numericals so that a final touch will be perfect. Okay, thank all of you. Take care. Bye. See you.